ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowlful, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! Liz Barker, a raw-boned, rugged type of Western woman, became sole owner of the big and prosperous Circle B Ranch when her husband, a hard-fighting, determined man, died. Her brother Hank, a mild-mannered man, was foreman of the Circle B. One morning, Liz strode to the corral, where Hank and some of the ranch hands were saddling their horses. Hank, I want to talk to you. Oh, morning, Liz. We had an early breakfast. We're just leaving for the roundup. Here. Hank. I told you to have the men put up a strong fence across the corner of the south range to keep the other cattle out. I went there early this morning, and that fence wasn't up. Liz, I reckon you forgot about the small ranchers south of here. They have to cross that south range to drive their cattle north to the stockyard. With big gulch to the east and mountains to the west, they'd have to drive them 30 miles farther if that fence is built. And it'll mean trouble. You get that fence up or you won't be foreman any longer. As for trouble, we'll meet that when it comes. I pay all of you high wages and give you good food and lodging. If you want to go someplace else to work... Oh, we want to work for you, man. That's right, man. Well, let's go, boys. Later that day, Jed Stone, another rancher, called a meeting of his neighbors at his ranch house. Jed was speaking. Now, folks, folks, I found out today that Liz Barker's men are putting up a fence so we can't cross anymore. What? Liz Barker's husband promised Daddy he'd leave the range open. And I, for one, think we ought to make her stick to that promise. Well, of course we ought. Before I sent for all of you, I, I went over to talk to Liz. But she wouldn't even see me. Why, that ornery, mean-tempered female. We can't let her get away with it, Ted. Well, all right, then. But just what do you think we can do about it, Keith? Let him get the fence finished. Then our men will go and rip it all down. It's a good idea. That'll sure show Liz Barker that we mean business. I'll let you all know when it's finished. It ought to be done in a couple of days. And then our men will go over there after dark and get busy. That night at the cafe in town, two men sat talking in low voices. Listen, Chuck. Before you came in, I heard talk about trouble brewing between the Circle B spread and some of the small ranches. Over a fence that's being put up on the South Range. Huh? What about it? It seems the woman owner of the Circle B is determined to run that fence. Five small ranches south of her place are being cut off. 
Yeah, hopping mad about it. Where do we come in? Our gang can rustle cattle from the Circle B and from the others. Uh -huh. They'll blame each other. <laughs> we can be making a profit while they're at each other's throats over that fence. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. When do we make our first move? Later tonight. We'll rustle some of the Circle B cattle while most of the cow folks are busy at the south end of the spread working on that fence. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's go to the hideout and tell the gang. Come on. That same evening, Tonto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, joined the masked man on the outskirts of town. Oh, scout. Oh, fellas. Well, Tonto, we'll take the supplies you brought right into the foothills nearby to pitch camp. Here's Zulu. Steady, big fella. Come on, Zulu. Get him up, scout. Men in store talk about trouble between Circle B spread. Small ranches to south. Isn't that the Barker spread? That's right. I've heard a lot about Liz Barker. She seems to have a knack for getting into trouble with her neighbors. Me hear her plenty stubborn, have quick temper. We'll watch developments, Tonto. And if necessary, do what we can to stop serious trouble. Meanwhile, we'll try to get a line on Gunner Savage's gang. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Go. The following morning, Liz Barker rode to the South Range and pulled to a stop beside her brother Hank, who was supervising the work on the new fence. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Hi, Liz. We're almost through with the fence. We'll have it completed by noon, I reckon. Good. Hey, who's that coming? Cowpoke. He went to the West Range this morning. Something must be wrong. Hey, ho, 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 ho there, boy. I just missed you at the ranch house, ma'am. The cook told me you came here. All right, all right. What do you want? Why aren't you overriding herd on the west range? Well, I just came from there. Some of the cattle are missing. What? Must have been stolen during the night. Are you sure? Yeah. I'd say they took about 50 head. Why, those dirty thieving polecats. So that's what they were doing last night. Who? Well, I don't savvy. Jed Stone and those other conniving, low-down, mealy-mouthed coyotes who call themselves ranchers. Well, hold on, Liz. You really don't think they'd pull anything like Russin to get back at you, do you? What's it look like? My cattle are gone, aren't they? You come with me, Hank. Where are we going? We're riding to Jed Stone's place, that's where. He seems to be spokesman for that bunch of thieves. Now hit leather and let's get going. Well, steady there. <laughs> I'm ready, Liz, but I think... I'll ready. do the thinking. Come on. Get up. Get up. Come on. Jeb Stone was talking to Kate Sykes when Liz and Hank pulled to a halt near the corral. Oh, oh, oh there. Oh, oh, steady. Well, what brings you here, Liz Barker? You know what we're here for, and so does Kate Sykes. Neither one of us are mind readers. But it's easy to tell you didn't come to say you decided to let us cross the South Range. You're doggone right I didn't. I've come to say I want the 50 head of cattle back that you and the others stole last night from the West Range. What? Well, you must be joking, Liz. Well, it's Sunday. If you aren't, you'll have to take back those words. Hold it, Kate. I got you covered. Now, now, it ain't ladylike for you to draw guns like that. Huh. We don't know anything about stolen cattle. And that's all there is to be said, as far as I can see. I'll get proof, and when I do, it'll be too bad. That fence will be finished today, and it's up to stay. Now, you can tell the others I said you'll all be mighty sorry for what you've done. Let's get out of this low-down company, Hank. Steady there. Steady there. Get up. Get up there. Come on. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had left their camp and were following the trail toward town. We may be able to get a line on Gunner Savage's gang in town, Tonto. Ah. Look, Kimasabi, two riders coming over rise yonder. They ride into the gully until they pass. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. Easy, Silver. Easy, Scout. Easy, easy, fella. Easy. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh Scout. Oh, fella. I'll be sure they not see us. Steady, boy, steady. I'm sure Jake Stone and the other ranchers south of my spread stole those cattle last night, Hank. And I'll find truth. Oh. Soon as the men finish that fence, 
take some of them and try to trail those cattle from the West Range. I'll bet you'll find them hidden on one of the South Ranches someplace. Well, maybe. I'm sure of it. And when I do get the truth, I'll make them mighty sorry they stole Purple Heat cattle. That Barker woman, Kimasabi, her talk of ranchers stealing cattle. Yes, the trouble has started. We'll head for the West Range and try to trail those cattle before her men get there. Ah. You think small ranchers take cattle for spite? I doubt it. But if the cattle are foul in one of the ranches, we'll mean a gun battle. We'll do what we can to stop that. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the have that happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties, and do, 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 an okay, okay. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Wheaties. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musio, known as Stan the Man, because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. to continue. Meantime, the outlaw Chuck rode to a deserted line shack in a secluded valley near the Circle B. He told Gunner and the gang that he had seen a masked man and an Indian riding along the South Range. The Circle B has a large herd on the South Range. If they were suddenly stampeded, a couple of hombres on that trail wouldn't have much of a chance to get out of the way. Yeah, and the ranchers would be blamed again. All right, let's hit the leather, boys. We have to move fast. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along the trail as they headed for the range from which the cattle had been stolen. The Lone Ranger was saying, There's a big herd grazing on this range, Tonto. They seem to be all over the place. Oh, that's right. Men working south of here, beyond hills, putting up fence. It's good they're not able to see us. Yes, that would complicate matters. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold Shots seem to come from up that way, beyond the herd. Look, Kinosabe, herd's starting to stampede and then come this way. We're caught in the middle of the herd. We can't make it to either side, Toto. We'll have to head straight south. A circle beam man down that way. It's our only chance. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! The large herd of frenzied cattle had moved with surprising suddenness, heading directly for the Lone Ranger and Toto. The Longhorns raced forward in a horseshoe formation, with a masked man and Indian almost in the center. We must pull ahead of the cattle on either side before they close in front of us. That way, fast to big fella. One, two, three. Come up, scout. The great horse Silver and the valiant scout moved ahead as they topped the hill. On the other side of the hill, the Circle B men had heard the shooting and the thunder of the stampede. They hurriedly mounted, leaving their work on the fence, and withdrew to each side. Tonto pointed and called out, There's fence, Kimasabi! And me see cow folks. That fence is our big chance, Tonto. We'll jump the fence. It will slow the cattle. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! Gradually, the two horses pulled further ahead, and then the fence loomed before them. Up, Silver! Scout! Without lessening their speed, both horses rose into the air. They cleared the high fence with only inches to spare. And as the Lone Ranger and Tonto turned the gallant horses to one side, the cattle hit the fence. Momentarily, the herd slowed. Then, as the fence gave way, the cattle moved on, sweeping past the masked man and Indian as they stopped out of harm's way. That was close, Toto. Plenty close. The Barker men will be coming after us in a moment. I want to go back and find the men who started that stampede. Let's go. Meantime, Liz Barker and her men watched as the herd demolished the new fence. Then Liz, shaking with anger, spoke. The herd will have to stop when it reaches the base of the cliff yonder. 
That stampede was started just to ruin the fence. Sure. The two hombres we saw riding out of the way must have been with the gang who started the stampede. They almost got trapped. I saw them leave and ride back up the range. The small ranchers hired them to do that. Hank, take some of the men and go round up those cattle. All right. Ted, you go bring the sheriff and have him join Hank and the others. All right. After the herd's rounded up, they'll follow that masked man and Indian. Yes, ma'am. Come on, get it. Oh. What are you going to do, Liz? I'm taking the rest of the men, and I'm going to have a showdown with Stone and the other ranchers south of here. We'll all meet at the ranch house later. Now get going. All right. Half you men come with me. All right, Hank. Let's take one. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger picked up the trail of Gunner and his gang, who had gone back to their hideout. The outlaws made their trail hard to follow, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto had to move slowly not to lose it. They left a clear trail as they followed the men to the shack. Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? They waited in hiding for the cowpokes whom they were sure would follow them. The trail of the men who started the stampede leads to that shack cut off. Their horses are back among the trees. Uh, you hear hope, Maybe ranch hands coming now. Yes. Come on. Let's go to the shack and get the drop on those crooks. The ranch hands ought to be here in time to help us. A short time later, inside the shack, Gunner threw down his card, saying, uh, I'm tired of playing. I'm going to flop on a bunk. Three, uh, you. We have you covered. The masked man and Indian. Holy smoke, they weren't killed. They're too smart for us. Get their guns out of while I keep them covered. Uh, me get them. Man, we're six of that two. Grab your gun. Hold it, you. Oh. Let them have it, boys. Get them down. No. Grab your guns out of you. My men are at the windows. There are the two who started the stampede, Sheriff. Yeah. You, masked man. Drop your guns, too. We're not outlaws, Sheriff. I say you are. Drop your guns. Now, wait. Here, read this. Huh? Well, hey, this letter's addressed to me. That's right. Marshal West gave it to me in case we had to get in touch with you. Well, it's a, uh, well I've heard of you and that Indian, mister. Of course, finding you here with this gang. These men rustled the Circle B cattle last night. And they started that stampede hoping to get rid of Tonto and me. They must have found out we were trailing them. The wounded man there is Gunner Savage. Uh, Gunner Savage? Holy smoke, Sheriff. If what this masked man says is true, we'd better get to Jed Stone's ranch right away. Liz took some of our men there. Get these cooks to their horses. Then we'll all head for the Stone's place. Right, come on. Later at Jed Stone's ranch, Jed and his neighbor, Kate Sykes, faced Liz and her men in front of the ranch house. Stone, your men stole those cattle and started a stampede so as to wreck the new fence. All right. Now hold on, Liz Parker. We can prove none of our hands left our ranches this morning. But that didn't keep all of you from hiring a masked man and Indian to do your dirty work. Grab them, boys. We're taking them along. Hey, here comes the sheriff with your brother and more of your cow folks. Look, they got the masked hombre. Yeah, and the Indian, too. Oh, 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 Liz, what's going on here? Jed Stone and his friends have caused enough trouble, Sheriff. I came here You've to... made a big mistake, Mrs. Barker. What? The men who stole your cattle and started that stampede are the outlaws you see there tied to their horses. The Gunner Savage Gang. Well, I'll be... That's right, Liz. They've admitted doing both jobs. The masked on betrayal them. Knowing that some of your men would follow us, Tonto and I left a clear trail. Luckily, they did follow and bring the sheriff. You, you mean to say the ranchers had nothing to do with it? That's right. You ought to be thankful somebody wasn't killed because of your stubbornness and quick temper, Mrs. Barker. Hold on, mister. I don't have to take any talk from you. Someone should talk to you. What? You'd be a great credit to the West. You'd use your wealth and influence for good. Remember, others have rights as well as you. And you might try acting like a lady if you can't be one. Well, of all the nerves. <laughs> good for you, mister. Maybe what Liz Barker needs is a man around the place who'll take her down a peg now and then. <laughs> I have something to say, Liz. I'm quick. What? The masked man's right. You aren't a lady. You don't even act like a woman. Wait, wait, Hank. What, uh, what the masked man said and the way he looked at me when he said it sort of hit home. Mister, not even my husband talked to me like that. But maybe he should have. Well, Mrs. Barker, some people miss the happiness and true meaning of life by living only for themselves. I 
I hope you realize that in time. I, uh, I think I realize it right now. Hank, don't quit. Stay and run the ranch your way. Now, how do you, like you mean it? that, Liz? Yes, I... I want to take time out to, well, try to be a lady. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Mrs. Barker, Mr. but I... Mr. Don't apologize. You made me see that I have feelings. Kate, Jed, if you're willing to sort of overlook what's happened... Of course, Liz. But that fence... There'll be no fence. What Hank says goes. Well, I'll be jiggy. Hello, we have business elsewhere now. Easy, sir. Scout, easy, fella. Adios, everyone. Adios. You know, that's the first time any man made me feel downright ashamed of myself. Tell me, Sheriff, who is he? Liz, he's an hombre who thinks so much of other people. He's given up his own identity to help him. Gunner and his crooks find out it's no use trying to get away from him. That masked man represents law and order in the West, Liz. And he's known as the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.